Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Gemba 360 legal webinar and update um, on the COVID safe plan for agencies. My name is Nihal Samara. I'm the General Counsel and Legal Director here at the law firm Kaizen Synergy. I would like to welcome you all to today's uh, special session. These webinars that we are running are running almost uh, weekly and the resources that we are developing out of this is being made available to all agencies as part um, of the Jamba 360 platform that your agency currently utilises. The COVID SAFE plan that we're going to be focusing on today looks at your comp legal compliance framework, covers public health um, directives as well too from state and commonwealth um, departments, looks at regulatory agencies, particularly around WorkSafe as well and what that means for your agency, but also looks to put it really into context for how and what your agency really needs to do and when. So with it, the COVID safe plan is very much a hands-on process that we're going to be walking you through um, and also look to clarify some of the areas that and important areas that your agency needs to carefully consider. So we will be walking you through that. We will be showing you what a COVID safe plan also looks like as well too. So as always, we'd like to pay our respects to the elders past and present upon the lands on which we all meet. While this session is being run by a webinar, we do pay our respects to the traditional owners accordingly. So let's have a look at the COVID safe plan that Gemma 360 has put together. With it, we have looked at the step one, step two, step three, and this really focuses specifically um, on the use of the Commonwealth specific uh, framework. And part of that, has been to take apart the first step, second step, third step for agencies, looking at what this actually means and how agencies can actually utilise it as well. Quite simply, the we know that there's a lot of documents, which I'll cover um, in a minute, that are out there. There's information right across the spectrum. Um, there's plans for plans, there's uh, parliamentary documents, there's policy documents, um, and it's sometimes just hard to know what works, what doesn't, where to start with and, and where to, and what your minimum compliance obligations are, but also in this pandemic um, state that we're in, literally, um, where and how variations might occur and what and when parliamentary updates also occur as well too. So with it, one of the things that uh, quite quietly we are confident to say is that this plan that we're putting up works because it already is being used by agencies to help them meet their pandemic legal compliance and compliance obligations as we speak. So with it, it's something that is being tested and tried, if you like, as well too, but something that agencies are also feeding back to us on in terms of how they're actually using it. The same plan that we've uh, put in here has been previously used in the past through the pandemics of the, or smaller um, uh, pandemics around swine flu and bird flu that we saw many, many years ago. So the plans that we're putting together in some ways has taken the learnings from those um, and then put something together that your agency can use as part of stepping through the, the step one, step two, and step three. So when we look at the COVID safe plan, we've structured it in a way for your agency and with the slides that we're, that we're going to use today are also being circulated around to um, all attendees and agency staff today, along with this webinar that is being recorded as well. So with it, when we look at the COVID safe plan, this follows from our webinar last week around the roadmap that the Commonwealth um, 
provided and also where your state and territories also overlap or will choose when to do things and 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 how so with a the background and context that I really wanted to cover off is effectively showing you the framework that we're going to use and that your agency can use as well. We're going to look at, in saying that, the legal compliance uh, framework, um, what the policy directives are and where those policy directives came from. We're also going to look at the framework and structure of the pandemic forms that will feed into a safe uh, COVID safe plan and how that actually looks like as well. One of the other parts that we're also going to look at is around engagement of staff and what the responsibilities of staff are in this COVID safe plan. There has been a lot of discussion with senior execs around, well, whose responsibility is it? Is it something that effectively sits at the executive level? Um, how do we actually get staff to input information in? Um, is this safe plan going to be something that is, I'm going to call it an Excel document type structure, and that way it's a linear type of plan? And quite simply, it's not, because the rules and regulations are going to change, not only between the steps one to two to three, et cetera, but also the rules and individual rules um, that your agency will also need to consider as part of the planning process and how it should feed back into that plan itself. So we will show you exactly what we've done and how we've structured it as well too. And this is something that your agency can adopt. Equally, we've structured it up. So you've got the three steps around um, the agency COVID safe plan, which we've said should consist of the plan obviously itself, um, but also be supported by uh, policies um, and it can well be your agency policies that you have and also the pandemic forms that I'll show you as well. And this will actually help you feed into your plan and make the adjustments that you need to do to mitigate risks directly for your staff, but equally your clients and services that you deliver. So effectively in Victoria, when we talk of this uh, process, um, and along with Queensland and South Australia, which we've just listed here as well. Um, effectively, these are the dates that I've put up um, in the past webinars, which many of you have seen already. So effectively, we are already moving into this um, stage process. So let's have a look at the COVID safe plan for your agency. Effectively, let's quite simply start at the top around this in terms of responsibilities. So if you are an officer or a director of your agency, so if you're a board member, if you're the CEO, if you're an executive manager in one of your areas, then again, you need to exercise due diligence to ensure that your staff comply with the duties and obligations. And this means in relation to the COVID-19, it means that they need to acquire the knowledge or keep up to date um, about specific obligations that you have. And this comes from really the work health and safety um, regulations and laws, uh, but also under the biosecurity legislation as well. And it is something that your agency does need to keep up to date. Um, and I note that by yourselves attending these sessions, um, you're effectively doing that. What we're going to look at now is the COVID safe plan itself. So as part of this, you do need to review your policies, your procedures, which you can do, uh, but also ensure that your processes around the COVID-19 are actually clearly communicated to workers. So this is stuff that's actually within your current work health and safety obligations that you have, whether or not it's outside, it's currently current sitting with the COVID-19 uh, public health challenge, but as part of this, it is sitting firmly and rooted directly within work health and safety laws and regulations. And this sort of sets the scene for the duties and directors of officers for your COVID safe plan. There are some key principles, um, and we're going to talk about the principles as opposed to laws around this. Underlying principles provided by the chief medical officer under public health directives really focus on 
the four areas of maintaining the 1.5 distancing and good hygiene, and we'll look at what that means as part of your COVID safe plan. The requirement to stay home if unwell, uh, the requirement to keep clean and frequently clean uh, disinfected communal, communal areas. And we've had discussions with um, agencies and staff over the past even week around, well, what does this mean? Frequently clean and disinfect communal areas. Does that mean uh, that we um, have to disinfect hot desks and what the frequency of this actually is? Uh, does this mean that the communal areas, yes, that might include obviously um, coffee areas and the likes um, and, and uh, snack, snack areas, but should we even be having um, food areas in our, in, our, in our offices? What about if we're talking of frequently cleaning and disinfecting communal areas, does that actually include as well to uh, photocopiers that people might actually literally go up and touch um, quite frequently throughout the days. And what does that actually then mean if we need to um, actually then um, clean and disinfect these areas? How far do we actually go and does that is that covered by our COVID safe plan and how do we manage that? Let alone the big ticket items around your facilities and site audits as well. So these are things that we'll actually look at as part of this process today. So clearly, um, just briefly, why is it important? Well, COVID-19, um, as the chief medical officers have informed us about, will be with us for some time. So it's important that your agency has a plan and continues to plan to keep your workplace health and safe and virus free, um, but also important so that you can continue to deliver services to your community, uh, to your um, community um, pro and your community programs. And so really the COVID safe plan, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to try and ensure that your um, agency staff are kept safe. The community services are supported. It evolves as part of your changing business and it accesses support to continue to deliver services as well. So really this is what is going to be done. And it's, it's something that yourselves are, are well across. Now, as part of this, the league, when we start to look at the legal compliance obligations, where does this start to come from and where do we start? Well, one of the key documents that we do have is obviously the three-step framework for that the Prime Minister allow, um, outlined as part of this process. So with this, what we do have is this framework that we now need to look at um, what are the legal compliance obligations that come out of this and how do we start to formulate this into a COVID safe plan? Now, what we have done is effectively look at the first column running down on the left-hand side of this sheet. And it gives us the guidelines of what we need to look at. So when we start to look at this, step one talks about the important steps, non-work gatherings of up to 10, up to five visitors at home in addition to normal residents, et cetera. And as part of this, one of the requirements was that workplaces develop a COVID safe plan. So with it, looking at that, and again, it's outlined on the step one, just going back to it. When we go back, when we take the next step to step two, it then goes through. And again, you'll find that it talks about the workplaces developing a COVID safe plan, gatherings up to 20, et cetera. Um, and also then going into step three, what that then means as well. Uh, with this, I would say that when they talk of developing a COVID safe plan, what we're looking at, what we'd look at is actually revising it um, as part of that or looking at the next stage that you have. Because one, for me, from a legal compliance point of view, our view is that step one should feed into step three, should feed into step, sorry, one should feed into step two, to then feed into step three. Let me get my numbers right. So as part of that, you're effectively you're building off um, your work that you've done from one to the, to the other. Now, as part of this, when you look at the legal compliance um, obligations, there's simply such a lot of information that is out there. There's information that you look at from a Biosecurity Act, there's parliamentary updates, there's 
um, work health and safety guidelines, there's a framework, there's posters, uh, there's also a word document in there. We've also been asked in the few last few weeks around whether the COVID Safe app should be mandatory or not um, for staff to use, what's the role of that, all of this stuff, and it's very hard for agencies to put something to, together in terms of where to actually start from. So let me give you the structure of what we've done and then I'll really walk you through this briefly. So effectively, and uh, we've adopted, adopted a quality standards framework. One of those that many of you would see is the QIP type framework as well too. Um, effectively looking at the legal compliance directives, looking at the assessment for self-assessment, which you should do as part of uh, a quality framework, and then also looking at what standards you need to then look at as well too. So following a quality uh, framework for this really gives you a measurable process that a lot of you would be familiar with as part of your um, quality standards that you would have. What we've done is adopted this and actually then suggested, well, let's look at instead of one, the first part is the legal compliance framework, doing the self-assessment, identifying areas for improvement, and then you've got your quality, your COVID safe plan. I hope that makes sense. Because part of this was following a framework that your agencies would already be familiar with, rather than trying to develop something from scratch and give you something that you wouldn't be able to use. So part of this that Gemba wanted to do was here, was to give you something that you can easily adopt based on your quality standards. And I've just used QIP as an example of this as well. Now with it, just very briefly, there is that whole process of plan, agree on the standards. This is a quality cycle that many of you would be across. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because it is something that you guys would be very, very familiar, familiar with. And really when you look at it, again, there's that whole idea of self-assessment. It feeds in, um, you have your quality work plan, and this was something that we um, just picked from the QIP website quite openly. Equally, there are others where you, you look at the child safe standards, whether you look at um, even ISO frameworks, a lot of these follow the same sort of framework that you have. As part of that process, uh, your agency adopting a quality framework around your COVID safe plan will give you what you need to do in type of a, a framework method uh, methodology. And as part of that, that self-assessment, which I'll come to, providing the QIP framework, and then the review and reflect, being able to feed back into it, will allow you to give you the ability to manage this process through step one, from step one to step two to step three. So what we have done around this is look at things like the, the structure of the COVID safe plan for you around this, is to build it from things like the legislative requirements starting on the left-hand side, looking at what compliance obligations you have. Now, underneath this, I wanted to talk about where the framework effectively comes from. And part of this is that it does, and when I say part of this, the framework comes from key legislation. We're in an unusual situation at the moment where a number of legislation overrides or supersedes uh, previous legislation that might ordinarily be in place. An example of that is around privacy legislation and what you expect staff to actually do. Now, what do I mean by that? We are in a situation where we are actually um, and can um, or may ask staff for information that they may not ordinarily provide. And that would be specifically under privacy legislation. Some of those things, for example, means that we're going to ask staff to self-report either on a weekly or daily basis if they're working from home. We're going to ask staff um, about specific health conditions that they might be experiencing. And I say might, be experiencing, not that they are, but they even might be experiencing. So we're actually collecting health information about staff, personal health information about staff that is actually outside what we would ordinarily ask them at times to do. What we're also asking, we ask them is, have they been in contact in their personal uh, lives 
with other people that may, dis that may have symptoms or display symptoms. We may even ask staff as well too around um, whether they've been to cafes as well too um, and start to record some of this information. So there's numerous examples when I look at this from a legislation point of view that is ordinarily quite outside where and what you might already be asking of your staff or your program um, service areas to actually report on. Now, as part of that, it's not that you're breaching your legislation, but effectively there is this expectation under legislation like the Biosecurity Act that the Commonwealth is imposing on um, people in Australia and also requiring it under a public health policy guideline. So first of all, when we look at the compliance side, what we're pulling this information from as part of your COVID safe plan is this biosecurity legislation, both at the Commonwealth and state level. Then what we're doing on the left-hand side that you can see is looking at, well, what is the policy requirements um, that we have? So in this case, it is around uh, the Department of Health, and I've copied some of these out and I'll start to uh, pull up these PDFs for us to have a look at shortly. But what does the policy positions of the Commonwealth expect for employers? Then looking down again is around the checklists of this and saying, well, what does work help the regulators like fair work or, um, sorry, work safe and fair work also um, require agencies to do? How is that put into a plan for your agency to look at? Are there specific guidelines that as we step from one, two and three, that we can look at what, how these actually change? And each one of these areas may change as we move through from step one to step two to step three, or alternatively ramp back up. Now, equally, there's also the uh, state pandemic plans as well too, which gives you a set of clear guidelines about where the st relevant state or territory is actually moving at this particular time as well. Now, each one of these areas, um, and I'm, Sure, just to avoid questions on this, um, the stage process that I've shown you from um, the legislation to policy to regulate, people might look at this in different um, steps. This is not a specific way. The reason that we've done this is because we've looked, said to look at, and this is not hierarchical, so I'm not putting one lesser above the other. This is for diagrammatic purposes only. So I just wanted to make that clear as well too. So as part of this diagram, we've just done it as part of how we've um, structured our thinking around it, looking at from a legal compliance position, which sets the framework for you, looking at the department policy, which provides some context and guidelines. And then from there, what we've then looked at is then what is the regulator obligations, whether they change or not, and what those um, information that they're providing, and then specifically around pandemic plans based on the state that the agency, your agency is sitting in. And obviously for the framework that I mentioned is around the quality standards that you then have. Once this is then put up, what we then have is a self-assessment to gauge, well, how ready are we as part of this? And I'll show you what that actually looks like. That effectively can get pushed into your um, COVID safe plan, which you are then as following a quality framework, you look at the areas that you need to improve and deficient in, and effectively it's fed back. Now, as part of this, what we have done, I'm gonna say for yourselves is skip the compliance part because around the legal updates and information and spreadsheets that you have and jump you into the self-assessment and also then coming back into the identified areas for improvement out of this. So as part of that, and this is part of the um, Jembus plan that you have around this, that you can feed your self-assessment and then identify your areas for improvement. And we'll look at what that looks like shortly. So in terms of taking the first step for your COVID safe plan, what should your agency do to reduce the risk of COVID-19? 
Well, the Commonwealth has provided some directions around this in terms of looking at that formal risk assessment process and apply a hierarchy of controls. And this was taken directly from the um, Commonwealth policy directives. So as part of this, it is looking at a number of key areas. Their first one was that employers and agencies should have policies and procedures to support employers to work from home and also work health and safety obligations as well. They've also come up with a number of specific areas to look at. Now, as part of that, they've even gone so far as discouraging carpooling between employees, and this could also go so far as also using um, shared vehicles at work unless you have cleaning and hygiene in place as well. They've got asked for promoting good hand hygiene by providing hand washing facilities or alcohol-based sanitizers, and they've given a whole list which you can have a look at as well. They've also gone through and identified the undertaking of frequent cleaning, modifying, they've also covered off management areas like modifying rosters and staff to reduce staff interactions, i.e. around smaller group and staggered rosters. Um, they've asked uh, agencies to um, have staff have avoid non-essential travel. Um, and also, which is interesting here for yourselves, train staff on hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene and social distancing. They've asked you to educate staff about the early signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Um, and I was also approached by an agency even this morning to update their form around this as well, which was specifically about uh, varying their daily uh, assessment form around identifying the early signs around this and also being very clear to develop a policy that requires staff to stay home if unwell. So you, when you look at um, 11, 12, 13 and 14, this is some of the key part or some of the important and salient points that the Commonwealth has provided direction on about training, educating, developing and supporting employees around adhering to official advice about how to um, reduce the spread of COVID-19. So this obviously, when you look at 11, 12, 13 and 14, is some very key points that need to go into a COVID safe plan. And those training parts also then and should be included as part of step one, step two, step three. Now, when we look at this, and we've just come up with an example of how this works, and I'll show you what we have um, shortly. But effectively, what we have also looked at is what is the um, obligations of employees? This is not something that should really sit um, just at the executive management level or board level. Obviously, it is something that needs to sit across um, um, across the service itself. And we have just had a question from one of the agencies that says, step one identifies non-work gatherings up to 10. Is there a cap on work gatherings or is it simply distance quotients? Um, this is a really good question around this. Um, effectively, the non-work gatherings uh, and work gatherings, whether defining non-work gatherings of up to 10 people, and I will just answer this here as part of this. So one of the questions that has come from one of the community health services um, is that step one identifies non-work gatherings of up to 10 people. Is there a cap on work gatherings or is it simply distance um, quotients. Um, this effectively depends on um, whether the risk that you have, it's a risk assessment process. So generally when I think the non-work gatherings that you have um, is around the social gatherings, is also uh, when we look at the definition of non-work, um, effectively it also applies not only to families, it applies um, also to um, restaurants, cafes and the likes around that as well too, as it stands at the moment. So we're suggesting to agencies to adopt that if they're looking at programs or services that they are delivering as part of that process, but equally also look at 
um, the distance and social distancing measures as well. It should effectively be kept at that particular number as part of that process. Equally, if you are providing community and health services, um, a number of agencies are um, changing this dependent upon um, what programs and services that they are individually delivering. And this fits in well actually with this particular slide here about um, obligations for employees because it will actually work specifically and vary depending to which programs you're in. If you're in an office environment, obviously there is that social distancing measures that WorkSafe have put in place. If you're looking at programs and there has been in the past, um, even this past weekend, for example, outdoor um, fitness that they have um, run, irrespective of this, there's the number of 10, they've still kept those social distancing rules in place. So there will be some flexibility that you need to look at as part of the individual programs that you are running as um, within the agency itself. That fits into the um, obligations for employees as well too. So this is not something that sits at the executive management or board level. It is something that will need to sit for to be effective as part of your COVID safe plan. You will need to um, utilize staff as part of this. Now, part of my next slide around this was to actually say that we've actually run this with a number of agencies um, to utilize this. And as part of the case study that we have, effectively one of the areas that you'll need to consider and we'll show you the COVID safe plan and how that fits in, is that under work health and safety, effectively their focus is on returning to work. But your agency will actually need to look past this for step two, step three. So when we look at the individual workplace assessment, that's obviously a risk assessment of returning to work. That's one part of this COVID safe plan. The other part is going to be on how and what do you do to monitor what is going on in your workplace. Some agencies, and this is just a list of the specific forms that some agencies have taken up, they've used things like the daily assessment form, they've looked at working from home registers, they've looked at workstation um, cleaning registers as part of the WHS requirements. They've had a cleaning register as well too that feeds into the COVID safe plan and also looked at it from a quality and compliance area in terms of providing that support and resource to update this as well. So the safe plan that the Commonwealth has requested that all agencies do is fine to have, but the actual operation of it needs to be carefully considered by your agency. And this is when we look at a case study, this is where it's actually worked very, very well for agencies or as they've moved through this pandemic, because effectively these data sets that they've been utilizing is feeding into what their safe plan looks like. So let's jump in around this and actually have a look at the safe plan itself. So we do have as part of this, um, the um, pandemic button that your agency can access. When you click on that, what you can, what brings up is effectively the this dashboard here. Under the project section, when you look at the safe plan, and I'll just make this slightly bigger for us to look at. Effectively, what I showed you right at the start is this. We've divided it up into step one, step two, and step three three. And I'll just make this screen slightly bigger so that you can see that. There we go here. Now we're talking. All right. So step one, step two, and step three. So effectively, it's divided up as part of your process. You can, and we will excel, um, export this out um, as an Excel document, which you're able to utilize as well. But effectively, it gives you the ability and uh, to manage each of these areas. One of the things that we've included as part of that, that um, I'm going to call a total annual budget, you'll see on the left here, and agencies have said, why would we put that in? One of the things that came out of the swine flu and bird flu um, um, 
issues and, and public health challenges that we had a number of years ago, um, certainly in Victoria, uh, but also with the bushfires as well too, is identifying how much is this actually costing the agency around this. And so as part of that, people's time of how and what they're actually doing can be calculated, but you can effectively use this to record it. What you'll find is that how this has been set up is that firstly, we've got step one, step two, and step three. With it, we've set it out so that you have the start date and end dates that you're able to see here. Um, what you're able to do is then obviously update these as these change as well. And so with it, at this moment, we don't have a start date for step two and step three, so these have been simply left blank. But if I wanted to update this, I could simply go into, click on open, and let's say we suddenly get a notification coming from the parliament um, that effectively step two is going to start, and let's be very, very optimistic about this, that step two is going to start conveniently on the 1st of July, um, as part of the and, and link in with the um, financial year conveniently, and it's going to go through to the uh, first quarter um, conveniently again. So with it, and I'm simply going to update this. Now, when we go back as part of this process, what you're able to see directly from here is that this has been updated and we've got a timeline for this, and you can see that being updated here. As I mentioned before, let's go into step one as part of the COVID safe plan. And effectively what we've done is, and I'll bring up my slides again around this, is to go back, and if we go back to the individual quality standards area. Effectively what we've laid out is the legislation, the regulations, what policy standards and what standards your agency needs to meet. So we have the legislation of what we have. So as part of this, what we have identified is taken the Commonwealth guidelines, and I'm in the COVID stage one, uh, step one process. What we've done is this. Under, and I'll just go back so that we can follow this. So, and effectively this is repeated in each of the step one, step two, step threes. So as part of this, what we've then gone into step one is to look at what the Commonwealth has required agencies to do. And that is provide a COVID policy and review as part of their process. Safe work has then required agencies to go through and undertake a risk assessment. And if I wanted further information, I can then open that up as well too. We also need to make sure that our legal compliance obligations are met as well. So we've got our, in this case, um, WHS assessment. Now, as part of this, what we've also looked at, and I'm just gonna reorder these columns for us in a second, is that we then have each of the quality standards listed. And in this case, I've got governance as standard one, standard two, management, consumer engagement, diversity and service delivery. And each one of these specific requirements, then for yourselves, um, you might have ISO standards, you might have other child safe or um, Department of Education standards. Uh, we've just put in one example for yourselves to, 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 to see. Now, as part of this, what we have done under the COVID safe plan is assign it to a specific person, have the due date and equally how much time is actually added in. So in this case, let me have a look at the, which I've mentioned in the past, I'm actually gonna have a look specifically around this area here, which is around what should employers do to reduce the risk of COVID-19. It's part of the COVID safe plan. It's something that the Commonwealth guidelines have requested that agencies do. So this is looking at social distancing is supported and try to ensure that four square meters per person has been adhered to. So in this case, what we've then done is then look at this particular item here. I can see as part of this that uh, we do have something due um, today that needs to be actioned. And as part of that, 
we've then got the specific requirements that we need to meet. So if I wanted to have a look at this, and let me bring this up, here we are here, and I can see that there's this one here, which is the standards assessment that we need to look at. So opening this up, I can see here that we've now got the feed directly in of the work health and safety obligations. It includes exactly what needs to happen. And it tells us that we need to do three things that is provide and maintain the work environment that is without risk and what I'm going to do to monitor the health and safety of the workers. As part of that, we've also brought together the specific document under this tab that allows us to actually look at what we need to see. And again, because the feeds are going in to WorkSafe, effectively we've got the workplace checklist that we can then pull off and complete online as well too. We've then equally got the cleaning checklist as well too. That also tells me exactly what I need to do um, and when, and also gives me that reference point as well. As these continue to change, these then get updated and means then that I can then add the reference document directly back to this particular task that I have. It means then that as the assessments are completed as part of this process, let me bring this up to see this, um, I can then bring this up and I can then mark exactly what needs to be done and when. So as part of this, let's say we've completed this and say workplace assessment has been action and this is completed um, prior to staff returning. Now, if there was a couple of deficiencies on this as well too, I can then identify that, identify that we need to place signs, work safe, signs into the communal areas. Now, what do the communal star signs look like as part of this? And I can simply save that. What this means, as you would know, as part of this, is that when we go in and we want to have a look at this, we've then got details of what's been done and who's actually actioned this as well. And we've got the dates and times that this has also been actioned. Equally, if this has been assigned, I can then say, right, we've opened it and I need to effectively um, address this as part of this. So when you have a look at your COVID safe plan, how this needs to be structured is what is the priority of this? Who it's actually assigned to? What are the due dates? What are the milestones? And what has actually been assigned and when it is ready? So I'm gonna mark that this is simply ready here. I'm gonna complete this, but importantly, what I then also need to look at is what are the specific um, signs that I also need to put up as part of this as well. So effectively, I wanna put up the signs and we've got this directly from the Department of Health, which we've also placed in. So as part of your COVID-19, effectively you've got these and we'll send these through, these information sheets and sheets that you can actually place up for staff to actually utilize within your agency. So effectively what you then have is a list of all of these um, information that you can then utilize. You've got it in one place as part of your COVID safe plan that you have. You're able to then draw on information that you might need to utilize as part of that. We know that um, there is the hygiene checklist that people need to have. And also, if there is uh, physical distancing that you need to also show people as well too, then you can do that. But effectively, you've got this information directly at hand. And again, these types of signs that you need to place up can then also be placed across your agency. So within a, the COVID safe plan, when you look at these, and what you need to see is effectively just divided up into each of these specific standard areas. It effectively looks at, when I'll bring this up, 
your policy, you've got your work health and safety obligations, if there's assessments that you need to do at each stage, and then you've got your specific quality standards of how these are actually tailored up to meet your specific reporting requirements as well. Each one of these can then effectively and should be allocated to different people and timelines set of what and when each of these activities need to occur. Effectively, which is great, and agencies have done this, is effectively pu pulling out the reports that they need to see as part of this process, and this is just an example of that, which allows you to see it instantly gaze how your COVID safe plan is effectively traveling. What we have done is mirror this across the steps one, two and three. So effectively, as this comes up and effectively it is then updated, these plans and structures are then updated, which then gives you the ability to either ramp up or ramp down, depending on what and when your um, service and when you need to action these directly. So effectively, as part of this process, and I'll just bring up these details again for us as well, um, effectively, you're able to then structure out what the Commonwealth and legal requirements are that you have. Um, you can then effectively feed this back to employees as, as part of this process. You have your safe plan that is structured based on your legal compliance obligations and those specific requirements that I've covered off. You've then got your work health and safety and fair work checklists and audits that you also need to complete. And as part of that, any specific registers that then need to come out of here is then fed back directly into your COVID safe plan directly. With it on your Gemba dashboard, you do have some of these checklists that you can start to utilize already around um, workplace limit and what you can do to um, to control the spread of COVID-19 within your agency. And this effectively covers off the cleaning, the monitoring and planning ahead. It is a register that your agency can actually utilize as part of that. Um, and you, it's certainly something that agencies have already started to utilize as well. As part of that, as I've mentioned, you can look at the tasks and activities based on the individual step threes of your COVID-19 reporting. But most importantly, what we are suggesting as part of this process, your COVID safe plan should really consist of three parts around this. One is obviously the plan, which I've walked you through today, looking at step one, step two, step three. It has the specific requirements under your legal compliance framework, your policy directive and regulatory requirements. Those will change over time. They may ramp up or they may continue to ramp down depending on the exposure and spread of the virus. And obviously monitoring within your agency is going to be important. So as part of that, your policies and pandemic forms should then be able to and should feed into uh, what decisions you are making. We have had um, agencies ask us, and I'll just repeat this around, whether you, they can mandatorily require um, staff to utilize the COVID SAFE app and under the biosecurity legislation that isn't permitted to manually require people, you can give them the option to download it as well too, but you can't manually require them to do it or hold them um, or change their contracts or the likes as a result of that. So there are two issues that you need to be very, very careful there. Agencies have utilised the COVID forms um, on Gemba, which is a simple form that your agency can use or a paper-based form equally that you may want to use as well. It's important that you continue to look at your policies as part of that process and make sure that they're being scaled to address key requirements that your agency also have. And also utilise um, your pandemic forms as part of this planning process. At this stage, I will open up the phone lines and stay on the line and answer any questions that people might have. As always, we will stop the recording here and open this up. Um, I will just take the time just to mention while that's happening that by all means, if you do have any questions, please contact us on 1300 360 360 or email us at support at gemba360.com if you do have any other questions. Thank you everyone for your time.